very good morning children how are you all hope you are really doing good and also following the online classes without fail so they definitely they'll be helping you because you are in 10th so uh, we don't know what will happen but still it's always good that you have a very good knowledge so that it will be useful to you in the future okay children so today we are going to enter into a new topic that is transportation in plants transportation in plants so in transportation of plants right so like how the water will transport in the water how the mineral salts and all will transport in the water that is what we are going to see in this particular topic okay children so stay tuned at least so we'll do a small experiment now like for uh, you just take some bajra seeds or mustard seeds bajra or mustard seeds right so you take the bajra seeds or the mustard seeds and like you know uh, make them germinate so that you soak them in the water and after one day what you can see is you can see some small thread like structures and these thread like structures now look we just put it on the microscope and just press it gently and observe the contents of this particular thread like structure okay so these thread like structures which you can see here are nothing but the root hairs root hairs are the structures by which the water enters into the plant waters enter into the plant only through the root hairs so we are going to study a bit deeply about this particular topic right so now each and every cell you know each and every cell will ignore like, you know, whatever the cell it is even if it is present the root hairs on the roots and all ignore like, you know, they exert osmosis they exert osmosis okay so the cell membrane which the, uh, it has or the cytoplasmic uh, lining they will act as the semi permeable membrane this is what we have already studied in the lower classes when you come to osmosis it is nothing but the movement of molecules from the low concentration to high concentration through a semi permeable membrane that is what is called as the osmosis right osmosis is movement of molecules from the lower concentration to the higher concentration through the semi permeable membrane in the last year ninth class we have done lot of experiments uh, using the uh, egg membrane right so the egg membrane is nothing but a semi permeable membrane onion peel is also a semi permeable membrane we have taken the potato and we have done some experiments so all these things were like they showed what is osmosis and how the osmosis will take place so osmosis in the, in the sense osmosis only happens in the liquids right whereas if we take the diffusion and all diffusion takes place in the gases and as well as in the liquids but whereas when you come to the osmosis it only takes place in the solids uh, sorry it only takes place in the gases it only takes place in the liquids so that is the importance of the osmosis right now our complete uh, this topic is completely based on the osmosis so if you only understand what is osmosis then you can understand this particular topic so what is osmosis movement of molecules from lower concentration to the higher concentration okay lower concentration to the higher concentration so last year itself we have seen that okay we have taken a small tray and then we have taken a potato which we have scooped inside we have poured some sugar solution concentrated sugar solution here and in the tray in the tray what we have taken is the water right we have taken is the water and in the water let like, you know we have kept it like that so what we have done here is in the ninth class we have taken a tray here okay and in the tray we have taken the scooped potato and we have taken the sugar solution in it and this sugar solution like you know we have kept in the water so we have taken some water in the tray and after some time we have observed that this sugar solution will start flowing outside that means here in the sugar solution it is in the high concentration right 
and whereas in the water it is completely low concentration but still the water is able to enter into the potato through the membrane like this and then the level of the potato the level of the sugar solution started increasing and also you can see that it flows out so by this what you can understand is that the, this semi permeable membrane is allowing only the water to enter inside it's not allowing the sugar solution to come outside okay it is only allowing the water to enter inside which is of the lower concentration into the higher concentration now this membrane this membrane that is the uh, potato membrane is acting as a semi permeable membrane okay children so i think now you got some idea about the osmosis okay now we'll go to the next uh, thing okay children now you can see this extension which is the root hair okay these are the root hairs i'm taking just few cells here and these are the soil particles right and these cells are the first layer that is the epidermal cell so epidermal cells will give rise to the root hairs right epidermal cells will uh, make some projections out which are called as the root hairs and these root hairs are there to absorb the water and mineral salts from the soil now you have to observe here and you have to listen here very very carefully so that you can understand this concept okay children now what happens here is now this is the soil particles right and when you pour water in it when you pour water in it this water mixes with or dissolves the salts which are already present in the soil so all the salts which are present in the soil will get dissolved in the water so if the water is solvent okay salts are solute so when the solute gets dissolved in the solvents what does it become it becomes solution okay so now here what is here that is some kind of solution some salt solution so the salt solution will enter into the root hairs will enter into the root hairs and then it travels into the epidermal cells then how it travels that is what we are going to see now okay children so now here whereas when when you take this particular solution and all it is absolutely so the solution is completely diluted okay it is not a concentrated solution it is not a concentrated solution do you think it's a concentrated solution no we have poured lot of water lot of water and that water dissolved the salts in it so it's not a concentrated solution it's only a kind of diluted solution isn't it so whereas this root hairs already contains the cell sap it is also kind of salt solution right and now this cell sap is more concentrated it is more concentrated than the water which is outside or the solution which is outside so if this solution has to enter inside isn't it so what kind of process should take place here that means the water mineral salts is a solution which is formed here it has to enter into the root hair so what kind of process should take place here is it is it diffusion or osmosis okay definitely not diffusion because diffusion is high concentration to lower but that means water the cell sap is here it will come out because here it is low concentration and here it is high concentration so definitely what will happen if it comes from high concentration low concentration all the cell sap should come out like this isn't it but that's not happening here because now this will this particular layer okay the outer layer will act as the semi permeable membrane semi permeable membrane and it will not allow it will not allow the cell sap to come outside cell sap to come outside and in turn it will allow the water to enter inside water to enter inside now there there was a little bit of concentration here right so now what happens here is the water entered here and now what happened here is the water entered here that is the salt solution entered into this particular cell now that is into the root hair now this root hair has again concentration right now if you take this cell this cell also will have the high concentration of cell sap high concentration of cell sap now which one do you think has more concentration this one or this one okay now we will also see that this is also having the cell sap with high concentration here now this root hairs was also having the equal concentration but what happened this salt water salt solution entered into this and made this a bit dilute 
isn't it? That means now which has more concentration here? Definitely this will have more concentration because nothing is added here. So this will have the low concentration when compared to this particular epidermal cell. So because it is having the high concentration and it is having the low concentration, what happens now here? This what solution will start entering into this particular cell. Okay, and now this cell got the uh, solution from here. Now these two solutions, if you, if you take these two concentration actually, it was equal before. But now this diluted solution entered here. Again, there will be a difference in the concentration. The concentration here is completely different from the concentration which is here. So high, here it is high concentration. It becomes now low concentration. So again, the water moves from the lower concentration to the higher concentration and then moves into the xylem vessels. So the process of this movement is nothing but the osmosis. So osmosis is a process which is taking place here continuously so that the water can move from root soil into the root haze, root haze to the epidermal cells and then comes to the xylem. So this is how the water will be transported in the, okay, into the stems, right? That is into the xylem vessels and into the stems and reaches the leaves. Now this is okay. This is okay. If the uh, stems and all here are very, very short, they are, if they are very short, no like it's fine. But what, but what if these cells, if the same, uh, like you know, plants are not uh, small plants, they are very huge trees. Sometimes we have also studied that they are around 300 meters, right? You no, know, the sal trees and the redwood trees and all, they are very, of very great height. They are very tall. So do you think this kind of process will help it? Okay. So do you think that? Okay, now we'll come to that particular. So, to children, to understand that particular point, what we are going to do is, we are going to take a potted plant and then what we are going to do is, we are going to remove the upper part of the stem and then we will place a test tube like this. We are going to place a test tube, okay, and also we will fix it with a rubber tube so that the air will not go inside. Okay, and then I think you can even do so that you not move, you can also keep a plaster here. Now, what we'll do is we'll pour some water into this. We we'll pour some water into this. So, now here, now this is a test tube, right? It's a plain test tube which is transparent in nature. And after some time, what you can see is what you can observe is you can see the water coming into this particular thing. So, make it as M1. Okay, and then what happens after some time the water will reach here, make it as M2. So, like this, if you go on seeing that the water will keep on coming, right? How why, why the water is coming out? Because of the root pressure, the pressure by which the osmosis is taking place. The pressure by which the osmosis is taking place, it is sending the water upside, isn't it? It is sending the water upside, and that is reaching into the xylem vessels because there is no other part of the stem, so it is reaching into the test tube and you can see the water in the test tube. So that is what that is what is nothing but the root pressure. The root pressure is nothing but the osmotic movement of water, the osmotic movement of water into the xylem vessels by the pressure with which it moves is called as the root pressure. So the water will keep on moving and you can uh, know, the, uh, know by this. So that means the water which is in the soil will go into the higher parts of the plant through the xylem vessels. But now this is okay up to the plants and all. But how, how it happens in the very huge trees and very tall trees. Okay, now there is a process which is called as the transpiration. Which is called as the transpiration. This is the same topic which you have been studying from years, right? So you already know this topic, right? All in the 8th class, in the ninth class also you have studied that. If you tie a plant, some of the leaves in a plastic cover, you, okay, in the plastic cover, you can see some water at the bottom after two or three days, isn't it? So, why, where the water is coming from? The water is coming from the leaves because leaves will remove the excess water from the plant. So, that is how the water usually comes out and uh, that will easily definitely come out and you can uh, see that water here at the end of the plastic cover. So, this is the transpiration process. Now, what is the link between the transpiration process and the transport of the water. So that is what we are going to see now. Now just we'll, ex we'll just think that this is the huge tree. Okay, this is a huge tree here what we are learning about. 
Okay, now here there are some leaves here. Okay, now the water which is coming out, now that is coming out through the root pressure, right? That is absolutely because of the root. So here, now this is now because of the root pressure, the water will go. But like, like no, it only can go up to some particular extent. It cannot go even to the greater heights like 300 meters. Okay, so it's absolutely uh, not possible at all. So for this, they take the help of the process which is called as the transpiration. So you can see, children, like no, because of the root pressure, the water can travel only up to some extent. And after that extent, the water cannot travel. So for this, they will take the help of the process which is called as the transpiration. Okay, so how this process will help? That is what we are going to see now. So now if you take if, if you take these plants and all, no, like, so if you take the leaves, what, what the leaves will do is they will leave out the water. They will leave out the water. Now, we will take one small example. Here it is a glass, right, where you have some cool drink and all you have cool drink and all and then you have kept a straw here so as you suck the cool drink here so immediately the water the uh, cool drink will come into this particular pipe so it will never end until and unless the uh, cool drink which is in your glass completes finishes so this the like you know the lay the level of the or the transfer or the transport of this particular cool drink will never stop never ceases right so it will keep on going into the straw in the same way here there is a in the xylem vessels and all no like there is a water lining there is a very good bonding between the water molecules they are all lying like this they are all lying like they have the molecular attraction force in between the water molecules so they have the molecular force they are they are they have a very good bond with each other say so they are bonded so now when now the, just take the uh, leaves here, leaves will leave some of the water outside through the process called as transpiration. So immediately these water molecules will move a bit higher, isn't it? So in the same way because this, if these molecules move this place and these molecules will, move to, uh, will cover the that particular gap here. So once these are closed, they will move up and again the water molecules will from the bottom will move upward so they keep on moving they keep on moving so transpiration is a process which is actually helping in the movement of the water so root pressure plus transpiration is equal to transport of water in the plants that is what is actually happening when you take the transportation of the water so basically there are two vessels right xylem vessels and the phloem vessels xylem vessels no like they are bringing the they are bringing they are, they are taking the soil uh, mineral salts and so, uh, water uh, and water from the soil to each and every part of to especially to the leaves of the plant because uh, leaves will take that water and prepare the food material with the process called as photosynthesis so whatever the food which is prepared in that that will be sent through the phloem that will be sent through the phloem so children now coming to the phloem phloem uh, vessels were like no they are so small that they are so small which bring the food material which is in the leaves to the each and every part of the body so now it was very highly impossible because if they are so small the sieve tubes which are present in the phloem are so small that you cannot see them right you cannot see even the biologists could not see them so what they have done is there are some insects which are called as the aphids which have very very sharp beaks and all no like and their body like you know, they, they feed on this they feed on this phloem or, or the food material which comes from the phloem so now what they have done is they have taken these aphids and they have cut the aphids and they have seen the part which they are taking so that is nothing but the uh, food material which is prepared by the plants so that is how they came to understanding that whatever the food which is prepared in the plant that is being transported through the phloem vessel so xylem vessels and the phloem vessels both together what they do is they will transport the materials right so as we have we have the circulatory system where the veins and the arteries are taking the like no blood, uh, uh, blood from one part to the other part and again back to the heart and to the lungs and also that that is how the blood is transported in our body the same way in the plant the the food is all the water is transported to the xylem vessels and water the food which is prepared that is very very 
important for all the parts of the plant so that is transported by the phloem that is transported by the phloem so so by this we come to the end of this particular unit which is called as the transportation and what are the things which we have left aside will definitely continue in one particular class okay children so until then have a great day take care and our next unit will be excretion which will be starting in the next session that is on next thursday okay children until then have a great day take care